Welcome back, friends. Today, I've got something pretty exciting for you guys. I'm going to run through some tests. So I went and was listening to the Sprue Cutters Union a couple of days ago, and they're talking about decals, and they're talking about different things that are kind of myths and things that work for them and things that really people say you got to do, but don't. Now, this isn't going to be a complete, like, is this gloss before, before decal? Is it one of those? No, no, no. Don't worry. For tradition's sake, I will have it as one of the variables, but that's not what we're trying to test. So I'm going to go in and test, are there a few things that I'm doing that really is worthless and a waste of time? One, heating up the decal water to be almost scalding. Does that do anything for you? Or is it worthless? Hair dryer, using those on it. Does that heat applied with the hair dryer do anything at all? So we'll do that. I've got my test bed here. As you can see, shiny and matte surfaces. So we're going to put the decals on there and see, you know, if that does anything whatsoever. And so I've got basically six sides that I can kind of play around with. Fuselage and the fourth wing. So I've got cold, and hot, all that. I've got a crazy bound of decals to where I can do half and half where it's from the same sheet and see what kind of reactions can happen with that. And I'm just going to be looking more at temperature first. Once I'm done with temperature, then I'm going to be moving on to some of the solutions. And I've got some like ridiculously old decals that I'm afraid that they'll just crackle, fall apart when I put it into water. But we're going to try all sorts of different solutions and see what works the best. I've got some different new stuff. I've used this uh, VMS stuff before and it was almost like acid, but maybe it was just because I was just trying to use it on a good decal. And these are for like, great for maybe Tamiya or something. But when you use like a good cartograph or something, it kind of just melts it all. So we'll look at that. I've heard a lot of good things about getting into Mr. Mark Softer and Setter. So where this is softening the decal, this actually has an adhesive component why it's all kind of white. And then I'm also going to get into some experiments with homebrew stuff. Been playing around with this recently. Aptly uh, displayed to let me know what's there. That is about 50% extra thin. And then half Solvacet. And I haven't destroyed any decals so far with it. But yeah. So we'll have some fun trying to play around with maybe a homebrew that just works for some of those decals that just no matter what you do will not lay down. So hopefully we'll learn a lot. So let's go to the test bed. Okay, so to start out, I have uh, water that is just nice and frigid basement temperature, basically. And so we're gonna apply it to this side. And nothing special, just dip, throw it onto the paper towel, repeat that for a few of these. Just gonna wick away as much of the water as I can from below. Try to move bubbles. I try to pick uh, some decals that have a lot of carrier film. They can be very noticeable from Anything from an Edward set, cartograph, you name it. So it's not moving yet. The Edward sets move pretty fast.
Okay, so we're gonna let that sit and I'm gonna now get some hot water and we're gonna see how well that works. <clears throat> okay, so while my water is heating up, I'm going to try the hair dryer technique. So, just gonna put it on and then do what I was doing before with kind of rolling and squeegeeing it in and then hitting it. <clears throat> Alright, so now I have my water nice and hot. Let's get things wet.
All right, so we're gonna let these sit overnight. But already you can kind of see some interesting things happening with the decals. So remember, we haven't put any solution or anything on them. This is just testing just one variable temperature. And technically we got a little bit about gloss. So we'll let this sit overnight and we're gonna come back and take a, another look at how it is. All right, so it has been 24 hours and we have uh, some very interesting results with our aircraft here. So just to refresh you, the left side, we have cold. And then on the right side, we have hot water. And in some situations, the hot water worked worse, maybe? I don't know, uh, not much of a difference. And so there maybe needs to be some further tests because you're like, well, but if we did this, then this would be better. If this, this would be better maybe. And there's probably some truth to it. What I'm trying to do is look at just one variable, just the heat of the water. So we have that. Um, if you wanted to put it in the comments, I can create a whole nother in this series. We could do a whole series for all I care, where we could go in and have gloss and then do hot water versus cold water. We could do just smooth paint and then test it with some solvents and then with, with the hot water and see if like that uh, does something. So, yeah. Now, the other thing that we looked at uh, was the hair dryer. And the hair dryer was very interesting. One thing that I noticed with a lot of this is no decal, no two decals are the same. They're basically like snowflakes. Now, maybe snowflakes in Alaska are going to be very different from snowflakes in Utah. So you have some commonalities with this and all that. But I have where I have these decals, which I think are the, uh, I think this was an Edward set. I'll have to look. And you can see here where it just kind of bubbled. And you could almost see it in real time when you're airbrushing. I mean, when you're putting the hairdryer over it. But then with here, it works kind of almost magically at first with going around that surface. And so there's some definitely some promise to the hair dryer. But one thing it seemed like is that some of the water got too hot too fast and didn't have like a method to just escape or something. So maybe you have to be diligent with the squeegee or whatever. But it seemed to do pretty good with some of the details. I don't know. There's probably some thing where it's technique. So the theory behind it and everything is good, but just the way I was doing the hair dryer probably is wrong. And there's some good things to the hair dryer for certain things with it. But for flat surface, I probably wouldn't do it. As you can see, it didn't really help. But with some things where we need heat applied to kind of melt it a little bit better, maybe we do that. But the next part of this is going to be chemical adhering, right? So you have that. And then, granted, it's not the most glossy gloss, as you can see, but there is still a coat of gloss over here. Didn't do anything, really, with it. And so, not much of a change there. Maybe what I'll do next is put, like, just a ton of gloss to make it sports car shiny on the horizontal stabilizers and see what happens there. But on the sides, hmm, kind of not much of a difference. Plenty of silvering. The This here is from an HK kit. And it worked pretty well. Uh, with some of the water, I saw like the decals like Edouard um, that are pretty nice to start out with. When you applied heat with it, it was almost overkill. And on some of them, it just kind of... I applied a little bit on top to just kind of move it around and the decal just <laughs> clunked all up and just went, no, it's too much, too much. And it hated it. 
Um, whereas like some stuff where you have the um, Hasegawa decals, the heat really had a big impact on just lifting it from the decal paper. So that was a big difference there. Um, there's a little bit of a difference when we look at like a Tamiya decal and some things like that, but you can't really tell much of a difference. So in some situations, the cold water worked better, but there could be some technique in there. There's some other variables that are really kind of hard to eliminate. So there could be some other things going on. Okay. Uh, beyond there, let's see if there's... So next up, what I want to do is I've got all these decals that look atrocious. So what I want to do is try out all these different solvents and see which does the best on them. So maybe I'll apply softer on one side and then the setter on the other and see how that does. And then whatever decals are left over that have silver we're gonna create some kind of homebrew. And so that's where we're gonna go from here. So with this particular test about the heat and the cool, I know I'm going to be getting some kind of comments in the bottom and I love it. Let me know, not just like, oh, you did it wrong, but how would you run this test, right? How should I run this test next? Not just like on the previous ones of just, hey bro, you did it wrong. Okay, well, what'd I do wrong? You did that part wrong. Okay, well, how should I have done it then? And then it goes silent. So let me know how I should run the next test. And then I'll rip off these decals. We'll start again. And we'll do some more testing on it. Because I want to get down to the truth just as much as you guys. See if this um, really has much of an impact when we are applying heat. But really, in the end, no two decals are the same. And... For some, it was a big impact and tended to be like the older decals, thicker decals, bad decals. Um, we I saw that it was a little bit easier and not quite as stiff. And you could tell there's some more flexibility to it. End result, about the same. And so, meh. But it really just depends on who made the decal. That's the biggest thing. For some, not making a lick of difference. Some, you probably aren't even doing enough and you probably have to have like boiling water to actually have it do stuff. Okay, so let's have some fun. I'm going to do softer on the left side. And lay it on top. Of course, it needs to get below, so I am going to grab my decrepit needle, grab some, poke some holes in here. Probably rather grab a knife, but whatever. We'll just do a few bits. Some of you are cringing right now, but you know, whatever. And this one so far is probably gonna work really well. You get it below it, but not exactly a solution to do on top after it's already sat on there and started the silvering process. Okay, there's a Tamiya. I believe this is Edouard. For sake of time, I'm just going to use a rivet wheel 
to perforate it. Just lightly go over the decal. In hopes that we can get that material in there. Not saying this is the best thing to do. <laughs> the real stuff. You could easily overdo it and add a whole row of extra rivet detail. Which is not good. I also put on a ton of it because I am also curious how it affects my... AK Real Color paint. So let that thing let it do its thing. Now let's try some of this setter. Since it's got some stuff in it. Gotta shake it up, I'm assuming. So remember this the setter has an adhesive component into it. I've heard some really good things about it. I've actually been waiting for this to come in stock at hobby shops so I could try it. I think what we'll also do is try this, both of these before decal, see how that looks. I'm also really curious about this white stuff on it. All right, so let's pause here, and I'm going to grab some new decals and get them wet, and we're going to apply with these solutions below it and see what happens.
but flip it on top as well. Okay. So we're going to come back after a couple hours or so, and we're going to see what these setting solutions are like and whether or not they're actually going to make a change. I might add a few additional coats on top because that generally is needed. But also remember, whenever you're using these, don't do what I'm doing right here. <laughs> Just kind of leave it alone. Don't play around with it. Because if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, is it's actually going to be melting the decal. It's going to look wrinkled and bad. And it's doing what it's supposed to. So it's delicate. So if you try messing with it, it's going to fall apart and you're going to be angry. So let's see how these look in maybe about three hours or so. All right. So it has been about 24 hours. And... I kind of, uh, I'm going to call it for this one. So we set out to look at, does the temperature of the water really change anything? And mm, hardly any change. There was a few little ones where uh, certain thinner decals did react well with the water and, and made it kind of adhere. And so there was some truth to that. So it's definitely not an absolute in any situation. There are some situations where the hairdryer did help. So it's definitely not one of those, you must have boiling hot water for your decals kind of thing. Now, in one out of 10 of the brands that I used, yeah, made a good, uh, made, made a big difference. Um, for some of it, it might, I might not use it because it might be overkill and it might make it, uh, hard to work with on the surface. So there's a lot of, yeah, things with that where, you know, it, it's kind of, uh, something where I did learn a lot with this, but definitely not where it's conclusive and a hundred percent of the time and saying it is useless to heat up your water. So it's one of those things where no two decals are the same. Uh, they're just like snowflakes and something that might work really well. Um, and in one area might not be really useful at all. So when I look at our test bed here, put in some flat coat over it and basically no difference whatsoever between them. Now, uh, some of them, like with this this particular decal, we're getting a bit of a difference. And then with some of them, you had some weird reactions and we started to get into like bubbling and weird things going on with the hair dryer. But here, it helped it uh, kind of conform to that surface. So it's kind of interesting. So what I was going to do is now that we have a whole bunch of silvering, I was going to go in and use some of these chemicals to see what kind of fixes it. But I've done a little bit of that before, and I was just getting a little bit towards the process and finding out it's really a flawed experiment. Uh, we don't want to go any further. I mean, I did make a few little bits of uh, different brews to try to see what helped. And that's where you can see where some of this was a bit too reactive. Um, so we have like right here where that was a little bit of a difference where I was able to help out um, some of uh, this decal here. But it was a bit too reactive and ate into the paint. The reason why is because my Witch Brew 2 at uh, first uh, had MLT 50-50 with Solvacet and a bit much. So I toned it down to be a 25 to 75%. And that might be a really good go-to for some situations where it's after the fact and it's just not laying down and I need to fix it and we're at a last case scenario. So I think what we might do on the next video is I'm going to just rip off all these decals and start over 
And what we're going to do is do this the proper way of having the decal solutions applied as we're applying the decals. Because if we do it that way, you can see the decal works well. Imagine that, right? It, it actually works well when you're doing it the way that it should be. Imagine that. So we're going to go in and do something like that. If there's a few things that you guys want to see in the next test, put it in the comments. I want to know the way that I should be doing the test before I even start the test. Don't tell me after the fact what I did wrong. Explain on the next one what I need to do to do it right. Okay, what you guys want to see. But at least I did get some uh, good learning in here. Try to edit it. Apologize for the length, but I, I did learn some good uh, things with do I really need to heat up the decal water before I put it on? No, not really. It's not a necessary thing. And with some thinner decals like Edouard, uh, I might avoid it because it might do some things where I have one decal that's just completely crumbled somewhere around here. Probably not necessary. So I'm probably going to ruin it because it was too hot. Now, if I'm going to work with one other caveat, if, if I'm ever doing Hasegawa decals, those things do not like to lift off the paper. And it'll take like three minutes for it to actually come off. You heat up the water, it's like 10 seconds. So they actually make those work normal. So there's some truth to that. But very complex, definitely not an absolute, like a lot of things in, in modeling. So if you want me to go in, put in the comments, if you're more of like, hey, 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 but remember, we got a gloss before we need. We must, if you want more of that, we can beat that dead horse into the ground and do some more tests and seeing if it is an absolute of glossing for decals. We've uh, looked at it once before, but if you guys want to dive into that even more. So by all means, put it to the comments. Let me know what we want to do in the next, next test. I'm going to prep this by taking out all the decals. And so we have a clear test bed. And then we're going to put some more decals on and just kind of see which of uh, these solutions become my favorite on there. And then for some of the more stubborn ones, then we can play around with these and go in and have some fun with uh, some of the more acid solutions, we could say, for those situations where the decal just will not adhere no matter what we have. Or maybe you have some decals... Like uh, like these here that are just like, I don't know, probably as old as I am. See if we can get them to still work. Things like that. What would we use in those situations? All right. Remember, let me know in the comments. And until next time.